Okay, um, yes, you can go ahead and graph this with a graphing calculator. Um, however, your graphing calculator is not going to tell you what the focus, the directrix, the lattice rectum is, and all that other information. When you take your test, that's information you're going to have to know. And also, what we're going to do is not just learn how to graph it, but understanding that information, what we're going to do next is take that information and then learn how to graph or learn how to write the equation. So yes, you could easily just plug this into your equation, right? Calculator, and you'd be done with it, right? Graph it. It'd be perfect. However, I'm not asking you just to sketch what the graph is going to look like. I'm asking you guys to graph this, but I'm not only asking you to graph it, I'm also asking you what is the directrix, and what is the focus, and what is the lattice rectum. So to do that, we need to have this in our vertex form. Right now, this is in standard form, right? So you guys could graph this by using a graphing calculator, or you could use a table of values, right? So we can graph it. That's not the problem. But we know that if I want to graph it by using the focus and the directrix, I need to have it in this format. Correct? So we need to put it into that format. Now, if you guys remember, we did this before because we practiced doing standard to vertex <coughs> form so we could graph something by transformations, right? Remember we did that? Because H and K told us the transformations um, and the vertex. So we, can, we have practiced how to find vertex form. And let's do that. The first thing we need to do, though, is we need to make sure we need to complete the square. But remember, we can't complete the square with the 2 in front. So I need to factor out a 2 out of my first two terms. Okay, So I'm going to factor out the 2 of my first two terms. Now I can complete the square. So now I need to take negative 6, negative 6 divided by 2, and square it, which equals 9. So I get y equals 2 times x squared minus 6x plus 9 plus 6. However, unlike solving by completing the square, when we just want to keep something in quadratic form, we don't need to put the 9 on the other side of the, of the y. We could, but then we have to subtract it over anyways. So remember, we're adding 9, right? So if we add 9, that means we need to make sure we subtract 9, correct? I don't understand. Why do we do negative 6 OK, why are we doing this? The reason why we're doing this is you see we have this is a binomial, right? Two terms. What we do is when you do b divided by 2 and square it, you now have just created a trinomial. Three terms, right? OK. And these three terms, we created what we call a perfect square trinomial. A perfect square trinomial can be factored into a binomial squared. I'll explain it in just a little bit in a second. So we have positive 9, so therefore we need to subtract 9. But remember, is this just being, are we really adding 9? No, we're actually adding a 9 that's being multiplied by 2. So when I subtract 9, I need to multiply that by 2 as well. So the whole purpose of this, why do we want a perfect square trinomial? Right? Why do we want that? The reason being is because we can factor a perfect square trinomial into a binomial squared. If I said factor this, x squared minus 6x plus 9, you guys should know the factored form of this is x minus 3 times x minus 3, which we rewrite as x minus 3 squared. Do you see why it's important to have a binomial squared? Because now when you have a binomial squared, it's in this format. right? So that's why we want to create something that we can factor to a binomial squared. Now we do 6 and we do 9 to, negative 9 times 2 is negative 18, plus 6 is going to be negative 12. Okay. Now, ladies and gentlemen, we have an equation in this format. Okay. Now we can graph this, but let's go and find out all the information. So first of all, let's determine how is this graph going to open. All right, so we look at our a. And since our a is greater than 0, it opens up. All right, let's determine the vertex. Remember, the vertex is going to be h comma k. So in this case, we're going to have, remember, it's opposite of h. So it's going to be 3 comma negative 12. All right, and the axis of symmetry. So now, we, since we know we have a graph that's going to open up, we have our axis symmetry that's vertical. So therefore, x equals what? 3, right? Your h coordinate. 
All right. Now, so that's the stuff you guys already learned how to do. And we learned how to take a graph like this and then transform it and graph it. But now what I'm asking you to do is, I, don't, I want you to find this. This is stuff we've already learned how to do. But now we want to um, add on to this by finding the focus and the directrix. So let's just kind of sketch what this graph looks like right now and kind of see where we're at. So right now, we know the graph has a vertex at 3, comma, negative 12. So let's do 1, 2, 3, negative 12. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. So it has a vertex at 3, comma, negative 12. We know the graph opens up. So the end behavior looks like this. Right? That's the end behavior. So we know the graph opens up. Now, um, let's go ahead and determine what the focus is going to be. So since we know the graph opens up, the focus is going to be, is it going to be above the vertex or below the vertex? Above, above right? So therefore, do I, what do I need to, I need to add, so I'm going to, remember, we take the focus, we add it. Which term am I going to add it to, that my h or my k? Um, I didn't put the dotted line in yet, but we can. Thank you. I kind of skipped that. It's at 3, right? So that's like over there. So our focus, we're going to add it to the what? What do we add to? Which coordinate do we add to? Yeah. K. So our, so our h remains the same. So now it's going to be 3 comma negative 12 plus, now remember we need to add out what our focus is, right? So remember, the fo remember we need to do 1 over 4 times a, right? So our 4 times a, our a in this case is 1 half or 2. So therefore, it equals 1 over 8. So we have negative 12 plus 1 over 8. Yeah, I know, right? Not going to look right. But that's OK. So let's just do this to the side. Um, negative 12 plus 1 over 8. You got to get them to be common denominator, so you multiply by 8 over 8. All right, so therefore we have 8 times negative 12 is going to be uh, negative 96 over 8 plus um, 1 eighth equals a negative 95 over 8. I know. Why did you do that? Because. We can approximate with a decimal. But that's going to be your exact value. Negative 95 divided by 8. Now let's determine the directrix. Actually, does anybody want to figure out what's negative 95 divided by 8 decimal approximation? No. Okay, can you do that? So if we do the decimal approximation of that, it'd be negative 95 divided by 8. It's going to be a negative 11.875. So we know that this went down to negative 12, right? So our focus is going to be very close to it. Let's give our focus a different color. Our focus is just below it, right? I mean, just above it. Thank you. So now let's go ahead and determine what the directrix is. Now remember the directrix, to find the directrix, we need to subtract. And our directrix, is it going to be a horizontal or a vertical line? Horizontal line, right? Because our axis symmetry is vertical, so the directrix is going to be horizontal. So therefore, uh, remember, now we're going to subtract it from k. So it's going to be y equals negative 12 minus 1 eighth. All right? Well, ladies and gentlemen, we're going to do the same thing. But instead of adding 1 eighth, now we're going to subtract it. So you can say it's going to be a negative 97 over 8. Now we approximate that. Negative 97 divided by 8. It's going to be negative, it's going to be negative 12.125. So our directrix is just below our vertex as well. There's not really too much space there. All right. Now, we could sketch the graph as is, right? We could easily just say, um, the graph is, you know, just stretch it to your 
to gain. But what we're going to do is we're going to use the lattice rectum to help us find our other two points. So remember the lattice rectum, our last point that we need to find. Remember the lattice rectum is the absolute value of 1 over a, right? Yes? Which is 1 over 2. So that means, remember that lattice rectum is that horizontal or is the perpendicular line of your axis of symmetry that goes to your vertex. So it's very small, but you can say it's 1 half. And therefore, from each side of the focus then, if the whole distance of the lattice rectum is 1 half, that means half of the distance from the foci to a point on the parabola is what? 1 fourth? Yes. Think about it. If here's your focus, and we say the whole distance is 1 half, that means half that distance is 1 fourth, right? So I know my graph isn't going to be perfect on this, but what you guys can see is this is going to be a very skinny graph. And it's going to look something like that. All right. Now we could obviously use a table to verify points. We've already done some of this stuff. But the main important thing I want you guys to get to is, one, just graphing it by using the lattice rectum, the focus, and the directrix. And then two, make sure you guys put it into that formula. All right. Now you can obviously, as we mentioned, verify points that it has to go through by plugging points in, um, plugging points into your equation and evaluating them. Yes? The lattice rectum goes through the focus and is perpendicular to the axis of symmetry. Okay? And it connects two points on the parabola. So that's one example. Right? Yes. 